For the next hour, we're going to be doing the history and the lore of one of the hardest bosses ever, Kentaro, right after this intro. Don't believe me? Let's go! <laughs> First and foremost, I want to say thank you to the 16,000 people on the screen. I appreciate all of you subscribing. Without you, this would not be possible. Click the link in the description so you could join the Discord as this is your brand new favorite and exclusive place for Mortal Kombat content. Also, on top of that, be sure to follow my second channel called The Lore Combat as I do cover Power Universe stuff. But here on this channel, I have the Mortal Kombat Files, Defenders of the Realm series, The Lore of Combat, One Hour Documentaries, Mortal Kombat 11 Gameplay, and Injustice News, as well as some Snapchat hack videos. So make sure you check out content on this channel. Also, for those of you that have been asking that wants to um, support and donate, you can do so by sending me donations to my cash shop by screenshotting this and sending it there or just sending it now that we got that out the way allow me to properly introduce you to the lore of combat episode 11 the mythology of kentaro let's get into it all right with that being said let's get into it kentaro is a character from the mortal kombat fighting game series if you don't know i don't know how you found this video but since you did let me continue he made his debut in mortal kombat 2 as the game's sub boss and became playable in mortal kombat trilogy kentaro returned as a non-playable sub boss in mortal kombat 2011 alongside goro and shang Tsung, although the latter was a playable character now let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about kentaro let's get into the background let's get into the story kentaro replaced goro after goro was defeated by Liu kang in mortal kombat he is the only member of his race seen thus far to have unique features unlike goro and shiva kentaro has tiger striped markings all over his body as well as sharp fang claws and feline like feet now according to his mortal kombat 2011 bio this is indicative of the lord class tiger clan of shokan deferring from the more elite class draco clan that goro and shiva belongs to so they are likely more there's a Basically, they're more than likely more of his kind out there is what I'm trying to say. He's not the only one of the lower tier, basically. Now, it should be noted that in each game, his feline features stand out more than the last. I think we need to pay attention to that because he's evolving into something. Now, Kentaro was originally going to be a playable character. For those of you that don't know, he was supposed to be a tiger with two arms. Now, while his size would not be a problem, all of the playable characters were digitally resized to be the same height. That was one of the issues that they were having when they were developing the game, or whatever the case is. So the impending difficulty of creating an extensive detail fur-lined costume, however, led to Midway's revamping of the character into the game's forearm boss in the same way we saw Goro. So basically, he was going to just be completely different, but they was like, listen, we can't do this. So they basically just did a, a reskin, is what they did. I'm gonna call it a reskin, basically, you know? So, with that being said, listen, Kentaro appearance since Mortal Kombat 2 has shifted with Kentaro growing closer to his initial tiger appearance drawn by Midway. He is distinguished from the other Shokin by having true feline features, actual fur, degurgitated feet, fangs, and a distinctly feline nose. His unique feature, which differentiate him from other Shokin, are explained by the fact that he descends from a rare and ancient family lineage known for its brutality. Basically, that's what that was. He he got some ancient stuff going on there. I'll just tell you that much. Now, in Armageddon, right? Kentaro's tiger appearance was played to the limit, including his weapons. His saber tooth resembled in both looks and names the oversized fang or whatever it was that was basically the saber tooth tiger. And both 
both of them. I'm talking about his other concept weapon design, which was a set of circular gauntlet mounted blades known as Tiger Claws. So he had the Tiger Claws and the Saber Tooth Tiger and also had a distinctive tiger's eye jewel embedded, you know, that was embedded in the center of his outfit. In fact, one of the concept renders of his weapons actually make a reference to the Survivor song, Eye of the Tiger, you know? So, of course, it's a nice little Easter egg for those people aware, encouraging people to blast, Eye of the Tiger, you know, the song, or whatever, all right? So basically, for a long time after his introduction, he was seen as one of the hardest bosses in all of Mortal Kombat series. I'm talking about this was because this was way before he was able to do what he's doing now. I'm talking about he was grabbing people in midair, throwing them to the ground, and he usually followed up with a teleport stomp. He also shot up to three fireballs at a time. I'm talking about the extreme difficulty in defeating him was enough to provoke a comment from the video game magazines. This was back in 93, for those of y'all that remember. Back in 93, the video game magazine did a review of the home version of MK2, and they was like, Kentaro is the hardest fighting game boss ever. He don't just beat you, he kick your ass. Like, that was in one of the um, reviews that they had. And I remember, you know, reading that a couple years after and was like, just on the floor rolling, basically. I really enjoyed that. They they kept it honest with that. Now look, where was I? Oh yeah, Shang Tsung had a fatality in Mortal Kombat 2. This was the hardest fatality to do, y'all. Like when he morphed into Kentaro and punched the opponent upper body clean across the screen like it took me like 10 times but i finally got this fatality this has been noted as the hardest fatality to pull off in mortal kombat as it requires you to win your final round while holding low punch through the entire fight then releasing it two seconds after the end of the round i'm talking about this is the only time kentaro was featured in a finisher in a mortal kombat series and this was prior to you know, Shaolin Monks. This exact same fatality can be seen in the, you know, it can be seen if the player is defeated enough times while battling against Kitaro, basically. When the player is defeated by Kentaro in Khan's arena after Shao Khan says Kentaro wins, the crowd, you know, they basically cheers. So when it comes to powers and abilities, I'm gonna be straight up. Like any other show, can Kentaro boasts brute strength, stamina, and prowess. Unlike his brethren, Kentaro hails from a subspecies specializing in savagery. I'm talking about here a whole animal out here combined with a savage style of combat and miraculousness, making him one of the most lethal combatants on the battleground. Other than that, he shares similar powers to Goro, but is considerably more nimble. You feel where I'm coming from? You know, so he, he's a... He's a pretty good, uh, pretty good character. I'll tell you that much. And uh, just check this out. For those of you that don't know, he was in the comics. Kentaro, he was portrayed as a minor character in Malibu comics back when Malibu was doing the comics and they did the Battle Wave series. Now, unlike the games in which he attempted to avenge Goro's death, the comics show his bitter towards the Prince of Pain, aka Goro, you know, that was his nickname or whatever, since he always in his shadow and, you know, longs for a confrontation with him. He only, his only noteworthy participation in the comics is when he kidnaps Sonya when she leads an investigation team in the Shane Sung's, you know, Crumple Island. In the comics, Kentaro refers to himself as the Scourge of Outworld. Now, due to the anticipation for both he and Goro to face one-on-one, -on -one, since both an impressive and legendary sub-bosses, Malibu Comics wrote as a response a special When Titans Clash mini-story at the end of the issue. I don't know how many of y'all remember that. It was like, uh, it was issue four of the Battle Wave series in which Kentaro had his dream match against Goro. Now, the short struggle, you know, about two to three pages, ended with Goro victorious and, you know, served to reconcile both Shokins and, uh, you know, in the comics continuity, basically. So that's what that was. He really wanted to get in the ring with Goro. He got in the ring with Goro, like this dude really holding his own. Now, when it came to Mortal Kombat Legends, I'm talking about Battle of the Realms, not Defenders of the Realms, Battle of the Realms. I don't know if you saw it, but you should have seen it by now. But Kentaro is first seen alongside, you know, Reiko in the movie. He was with Reiko, Kitana, Jay, and Baraka planning out their next attack. You know, it was like, look, 
we going to spend the block on whoever. They was just planning out their attack. You know, when they seen Johnny Cage, they was like, look, they're going to op. That's, they're, that's a big op right there. They caught Johnny Cage spying on them. You know, Johnny Cage was basically staking them out, getting ready to step on them. But he ended up getting cornered by the Tarkatan soldiers. You know, so he requests for a surrender to which Kentaro laughs or whatever it was and suggested instead to refuse their offer and kill them all. You know, kill them all off. Sonya, Liu Kang, and Raiden arrive, you know, to provide Johnny Cage with some aid. So Johnny Cage, his whole gang showed up. That's basically what happened. They aided them with uh, Kentaro taking on Raiden. He's the first to get hit by lightning blast from Raiden only to then recover and tear off a tree from the ground swinging it as Raiden you know swinging it at Raiden and hitting several Tarkatans as Kentaro attempts to crush Raiden with the tree Raiden tears the tree apart with his lightning which was hilarious before knocking him back with another blast Kentaro is then President to see Shao Kung arrive in proposal for another tournament. Now, after you know Shao Kung leaves with Raiden to consult with the Elder Cards, like he already always do, Kentaro growls and clenches his fist at Johnny Cage, to which, which Johnny Cage responds by flipping him off, or whatever it is. So Kentaro basically is then present in Shao Kung's throne room with the other Outworld fighters. I'm talking about he was with Cage, Jay, Baraka, Li Mei, all. You know, they are defeated. Kentaro is the next to fight. During an off screen fight with Jax, he seemingly managed to subdue and prepare to finish him. He sadistically uh, asks Jax, you know, if metal arms will tear as easily as organic ones, to which Jax basically was like, you can try it, or whatever. So Kentaro attempts to pull Jax's arms out of their sockets, to which he struggles to do so, right? So, boom. Jax released some steam from his metal arms. He smirks at the Shokin, perplexed by his reaction, like goofy. So Jax places his feet on, you know, on Kentaro's gut, flips him over, pins him to the ground, and grabbing a hold of his upper arms, Jack remarks over the pain that Kentaro is fleeing remnants over how Goro previously ripped out his own arms. You feel me? He presses his foot down to keep Kentaro pinned as he pulled his arms out, like just ripping buddy shit, like arm. I don't, I don't. Kentaro screams in pain, you know, as his upper arms are ripped off from their sockets. Jack then leaves Kentaro to seemingly bleed out and die at the Coliseum. You feel me? So he he got his revenge. I mean, even though we know Noob Cybot was the one to take his arms off, and then Sub Zero in the movie took his arms off, he finally got to take somebody's arms off. Isn't it ironic? Now, listen. Let me tell you this. Kentaro's favorite quotes is, I will eat your heart. Humans, less ugly when they burn. He said on your feet, get up. Your treachery will be punished. You know, he known for talking his smack. That's what he know. He talk his smack. He talk his smack. You know? So basically, just a little fun fact. Kentaro, the character, basically was a stop motion figure who was inspired by the Japanese mythological character. Kentaro, a real Japanese character, y'all, and initially conceived for Mortal Kombat 2 as an asteroid tiger complete with a fur-lined costume, but like I said, the concept was scrapped due to the difficulty of creating such a complex, you know, complicated outfit, and the character was redesigned as a Goro spinoff. Now, according to the series co-creator, that was John Tobias, he basically filled us in on that. Now, at the time of MK2's release, Kentaro was considered, as I told you earlier, one of the hardest bosses to beat due to the ability to him being able to teleport stomp and at the same time throw the players even when they're in mid-air, which was highly annoying. Now, Kentaro was absent from Mortal Kombat 3 to Deception, giving him the longest absent streak throughout the series of Mortal Kombat games. Now, the best way to easily beat Kentaro, for those of y'all still playing that old ass game, which is fun as hell, in Mortal Kombat 2 is to trap him in the corner with low punches. This trick works more easily in the home versions and will work best using characters like Scorpion 
and Zero, you know, Sub-Zero. Now, unlike most characters who have appeared in the first three Mortal Kombat games, Kentaro has barely made an appearance in other media, y'all. Like, I'm being serious. You know, he was portrayed as a minor character in the short-lived Malibu Comics Battle Waves that we just talked about not too long ago, as well as the Mortal Kombat X series. I mean, he was in there too, getting this little airtime. But due to those being his only appearances outside the, you know, the game series, he is the only character from the first three MK games to not appear in any movie or tele television adaptations of the series. Just being real, they not doing my boy no justice out here. He is one of the few characters also, just to let y'all know in Deception Conquest mode, who does not interact with Shujinko. Now, like Mataro, Kentaro name seems to have a connection to Japanese myth, which we did go over, but you know, it's a slight resemblance to Kentaro, which was a Japanese folktale. I told you, MK loved that Japanese folktale, and that's why this is going to be one of the big characters too. However, also like Mataro, everything else about Kentaro has nothing to do with that tale. They just kind of slap some stuff together. But check this out. Kentaro is one of the few characters to fight with bare feet. Just a little fun fact. Others include, you know, Blaze, Goro, Shiva, Reptile, Cobra, Me, Moloch, Dramen. Now, like Goro and Shiva plus Motaro, Kentaro was portrayed, as I mentioned, by a stop motion puppet, which means they put a lot of work into this dude. If you knew how Goro was made, he's made the same way. But Kentaro, Rain, Striker, Shiva, and Motaro did not appear in the series for nine years years starting with Mortal Kombat 4 to Mortal Kombat Deception. This is the longest period of time during which the character did not appear in the games of any of the series. Uh, now in March 2011 issue of Game Former for those of you that remember it featured an article on three expected DLC characters. One of them was Kentaro listed as DLC hinting the possibility that Kentaro you know was going to be playable in MK 2011. However, although Kentaro did appear in the game, he was an unplayable sub-boss and the DLC was never released for Kentaro. Now, that feature was basically scrapped due to time constraints. That's what it was. Like, they, you've been having time constraints and couldn't get everything done. So his debut, he, like I said, he debuted at the second sub-boss of the series, replacing Goro in Mortal Kombat. In Mortal Kombat 2, basically. That's what it was, and he's the first of his lineage, and you know, you feel me? So that was basically was that he had an unfinished model that was cut out of Mortal Kombat Unchained. He was gonna be used for a classic MK2 secret battle. So I just wanted to fill you in on that, but look, I'ma let Ed Boone and the team go ahead and give you a little backstory on my boy Kentaro or whatever it is, and then I'ma come back and I'ma chop it up some more with y'all too. You know, like I said, for the next hour, we getting lit just like that so um make sure you like the video and subscribe and turn on post notifications as this is your number one favorite source for content take it away for me ed i'll be right back after these messages Kintaro. long time bodyguard to outworld royalty Kintaro has served shao khan for many years like goro he is a member of the Forearm Shokan race and descends from a lineage known for its brutality. Kintaro is like a Shokan, but he looks like a tiger. He has tiger stripes. Uh, he works for Shao Kahn the same way that. Swear I won't forget this, why do I regret this? In my mind reckless, thoughts are feeling endless Sitting up I'm breathless, anxiety's infectious I feel so defenseless, betrayed and embarrassed I hate being open, I hate being broken I feel like an ocean filled up with emotion Anger ain't a potion, rub it on like lotion I can feel it soaking, reopen, the scars have awoke Basically the teleport move, he basically flies off the top of the screen lands on the opponent, stomps on them a few times. We tend to give the uh, forearm Kuotan characters that move. As you clearly can see, this man is a monster, just like that. 
I'm being honest with you. I, I really, I really like his character. I really like his character. He bring a lot to the MK universe on what he doing. I just wish they can do, you know, more with him or whatever it was. Now, I do want you to know, Kentaro's head can be used as a throwable weapon against Shao Kahn and Shaolin monks. I'm just giving y'all all the little, you know, nitty gritty tips and tricks here for those of y'all still playing those games. Now, also, here's another fun fact. His portrait in the character select screen is different from the one in Mortal Kombat 2. And I'm referring to Mortal Kombat Trilogy for those of y'all that don't know. By the time we got around to Deception, even though he wasn't in Deception, he is one of the characters that is seen trapped in a cage in the dark prison stage. Now, he can be found once in Earthrealm in a small forest looking around. I'm going to tell you this, it, it is impossible for Shinjinko to speak with him as trying to do so will make him disappear. Trust me, I've tried plenty of times. And as I mentioned, you know, he was uncut from Mortal Kombat Unchained, which sucked because he's supposed to be MK2 battle. I know I just said that, but I wanted to make sure you heard me, you feel me? So by the time Mortal Kombat Armageddon came around, he appears to be taller as he was in MK2 and had a build that was more similar to Goro's. You know, he is the first main character seen in the opening cinematic at the, you know, as the head of the forces of darkness before all the chaos erupted. His teleport stop was not available in Mortal Kombat Armageddon, which was highly annoying. Now, unlike Goro, his fighting style attacks are more powerful, causing the enemy to be knocked down with a single hit. I'm talking about boop, boop, buddy putting hands on people out here. He shares the same throw moves with Goro. That being a grab and pound, but he has his own forearm grab move, which is unblockable. Y'all know I love them unblockable moves. Trust me, you try to block, you block, I cock. Simple as that. But by the time we got around to Mortal Kombat 2011, his first fatality debuted in this game. It took him that long to get a fatality. Kentaro returns as one of the three sub-bosses for the game alongside Shang Tsung and Goro and is one of the two primary sub bosses in the game of opposite you know to his draco counterpart um you know goro and by the time we get to the mortal kombat x timeline while he doesn't actually appear in the game he's mentioned in an interaction between goro and kitana which suggests goro doesn't like him much calling kentaro a striped commoner goro borrows a couple of kentaro's special move in the tiger fury variation Call the man names, but you out here trying to be like him. Sound just like real life. Now, Kentaro returns as a mobile game exclusive character as part of the update 1.17 for the mobile game. I know y'all remember that. Unlike many of the exclusive characters ported from Mortal Kombat 11 into the mobile game, Kentaro is the first of two characters that did not have their original fighting stance, combos, and x-rays attacks, and the second person was Smoke. I know y'all know that too. While majority of the exclusive characters retain their X-ray or gain an additional hit in their X-ray from MK2011, Kentaro is the only one that borrows an X-ray from another character instead of using his own, which is borrowing Goro's X-ray in its entirety. So they basically out here just copying each other. But look, in Injustice 2, he did get a mention by Sub-Zero when, um where Sub-Zero and Raiden appear as a playable guest character, Sub-Zero mentioned his name while interacting with Cheetah, comparing the latter to um, Kentaro, basically. So by the time Mortal Kombat 11 came around, Kentaro cameos in one of Shane Sun's fatalities. Don't worry, I'm getting ready to pop that up here so you can see that soon. I know it's been a minute since you've seen it because nobody really used fatalities like that no more in Mortal Kombat 11, but don't worry, I got you. When he spawns from a soul ball thrown by Shane Sung at the opponent into their chest, where Kentaro tears the opponent apart from the inside before fully, uh, fully appearing in the opponent's face. Now, when it comes to errors, while Kentaro performs his teleport stop from full screen, if you look closely enough, you can see his feet on the other side of the screen. But go ahead and check out this rare fatality, and I'm gonna be back with some more of that news. <laughs> You for eternity. Do your worst, Shang Tsung. And now a taste of things to come. Now, 
Now, you seen how he was getting down. Don't need play. But listen, after hearing that Goro has been killed by Liu Kang and his Earth Realm companions, Kentaro gets so enraged that he vows to personally punish them in the, you know, in the next tournament. Acting as Shao Kahn's bodyguard, Kentaro literally places himself directly in the path of Raiden's champions in order to make out his own style of outworld justice, hereby ensuring that none will have the chance, not even the chance, you won't even get the chance to, to challenge the Emperor. Despite being larger and more brutal than his comrade Goro, he is ultimately defeated as well, followed soon after by his master. That's just that. Now listen, Kentaro's Armageddon storyline is regrettable, or you know, it's rather vague, doing little to account for his activities after his upset in Mortal Kombat 2. It is stated though that he has served Shao Kong for many years, though in what capacity it is not revealed. Presumably, he enters the battle for Armageddon to assist the Emperor in defeating the forces of light once and for all. But I will say, the mighty Kentaro only had two, you know, two canon appearances and being an unplayable boss in one of them. This leaves him with a single ending fitting for one who favors brutal force where he wins. He is granted even more power, which is used to intimidate the enemies of Shao that's basically what that was so after best in blaze in single combat you know he basically was able to get a few swords he got fire ice chaos and order the blades seek out you know to seek out and slay people and plus he wanted to steal people's souls with the abilities of the warriors at his command kentaro did end up becoming unstoppable killing any foolish individual person that was foolish enough to challenge him basically so now you know what's going on with your boy you know exactly what's going on with kentaro he really out here in these streets man he really out here doing the work doing what he's supposed to be doing and like i said he's a race of half human half dragon or i should say half tiger warriors that's basically what that is for a lot of people that don't know so again you know just me doing my thing bringing this bringing this to your attention letting you know we all good out here so for those of you that don't know he is male he appeared in 14 games with his first being mortal Kombat 2 i'm telling you he's nothing to be played with out here so y'all better be on y'all p's and q's when you're going up against people online and they pick him i'm telling you straight up so listen when it comes to his weapons he has the saber, saber teeth, as I mentioned before. His fighting style is the tiger fist. And, you know, he resides at Outworld, for those of you that don't know. That's where he came from, and that's literally where he was. Now, he was betrayed by David B. Mitchell in Mortal Kombat Legends Battle of the Rams, you know? And in Mortal Kombat 9, he was um, portrayed by Rashawn Orange. So, those are the people that really you know, portrayed him, showed out for him. And the fact that he made a cameo in Mortal Kombat 11, I ain't gonna lie, that was sick too. I really, I really liked it that, I really did. Now, I'm telling you this, listen, when it came to his fatalities, he was not playing no games out here, which you gonna, you gonna be able to see that in, uh, in just a little bit. But I want you to know just how dangerous this guy is. So here's what I'm about to do. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a tower up on your screen so you can kind of get used to some of that nostalgic feel and we really gonna show you how dirty he was playing and how dirty he can get, especially when you're playing against somebody that's a beast with this character. So go ahead and kick your shoes off, grab you some popcorn, make a sandwich, use the bathroom, whatever you need to do. Come back to this video and play it because we getting ready to watch one of the coldest towers for Kentaro and you getting ready to see how dangerous this dude is. And then, you know, I'm gonna pop back up after the video with my commentary and we are gonna chop it up a little bit more. You know, one hour videos, we in the building. Make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications cause you know I got you with the MK content. You did. Check this tower out. I'll be right back with you. Kintaro. Bro! 
bring it. Round one. Fight. Kintaro wins. Fatality. Fatality!
Kintaro wins. Fatality. I guess I'll have to do this the hard way. Round one. Fight! Kintaro wins. Fatality. Kintaro wins. Fatality! and weak. Round one, fight!
Round two, fight! <laughs> Kintaro wins. Fatality. Kintaro wins. Fatality. Soul is mine. Round one. Fight. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
fight! Kintaro wins. Fatality. So you literally saw for yourself how dangerous this man is. He ain't playing no games. And you can't lie, that was a good tower. That was a good tower right there. But don't worry, I got some more for you too. We not, we not done yet. I just want you to know Kentaro is putting hands and feet on people out here. And I really love the fact that, you know, he's developing his, his own personality and he got his own look. So that way he's not like a Goro clone. I really wish they would have kept him with two arms. Or they could have gave him six arms. If I'm not mistaken, I think there was another character that had uh, six arms. Was it Shiva? Nah, I'm tripping. Or whatever. Anyway, don't don't pay no mind to that. I'm just ranting at that point. But yeah, Kentaro is definitely one uh, force to be reckoned with because he can go head to head with Goro and he can go head to head with Shiva. I think that would be a nice match. I would love to see him and Shiva go at it because Shiva. She ain't backing down from nobody, and neither is Kentaro. Kentaro feel like he got a lot to prove. He definitely got a lot to prove, especially when it comes to Goro. But he ain't got too much to worry because Goro do be biting, biting all the new moves that he get. You feel me? So, I mean, he had a whole new character. Goro should have moves at this point. He's been out for years. So the fact that they got to, um, you know, use the moves between each other, I ain't going to lie. That's a little uh, annoying if you ask me. But listen, I'm going to put this clip here on your screen. Go ahead and check out his ending real quick, and I'm going to be back with you. Upon defeating Blaze, a thunderous voice offered Kentaro four magic swords. Each would be infused with the power of any warrior of his choosing. Kentaro resolved to give the weapons the powers of fire, ice, chaos, and order. As if wielded by invisible hands, each blade found its victim and slew him. The vanquished souls were transferred to the weapons and there they will reside. With the powers of Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Havoc, and Hotaru, his command, none will challenge Kentaro and live. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed that. <clears throat> I hope you guys really enjoyed that ending. It's good to see, like I say, he has his own identity and that he was going for something different. And him having four swords, whew, oh my god, imagine him getting something like that. And Mortal Kombat 12. <laughs> I know you guys want Mortal, more Mortal Kombat 12 videos. Don't worry. I got them. They coming for y'all. You best to believe that. Now, also, <clears throat> I want to pass this question off to you guys in the comment section below. Who's your favorite Shokun? Is it Kentaro? Is it Goro? Or is it Shiva? That's what I want to know. Answer that in the comment sections. For me, I can't really pick because... 
Shiva, she was one of the first, other than Goro, you know, Shiva, I count her as an OG. So do I count um, Goro as an OG. I don't count Kentaro as an OG at all. I don't, no disrespect to the Kentaro uh, fans out there, but um, he's dope. I think he can grow on me in the future. They need to build him a little more, a little better. And I think he'll be a household name. I mean, he's already is, but I think he'll be an even better household name. Like, look how he's literally stomping this dude over here in the corner. These characters are no match for him at all. You see how he just running through them, right? <laughs> That's what that is. And I'm telling you, his whole thing is brutality. His ancient bloodline comes from a very brutal bloodline so the fact that he has some really great moves it just make him look even much better like i don't know if you guys remember but remember that one fatality he got where he just basically pull you apart and just destroy you yeah that shows nothing but brute strength that's all it shows and i'm here to tell you right now this dude is a force to be reckoned with he ain't playing with nobody out here i can tell you that much not even Shao Kahn. Shao Kahn can't even hold him. He out here putting hands and feet on Shao Kahn too, you know? So I would say MKs did a great job with creating a lot of boss characters, but they just need to do a, uh, you know, a great job with making these people available and stop making us wait 10 to 15 years, five to six years to play with them. But anyway, check out this clip. I'll be right back. Kintaro wins flawless victory fatality listen if that ain't savage enough for you i don't know what is dude strong he's strong as ever and you heard what they said he even got more hands than uh he got more hands than um goro though to be honest with you that's just that's just facts on facts or whatever it is now yes as i mentioned earlier they did fight each other in the comic book series in goro one but of course that was for political reasons basically that's all that was but listen you already seen him put hands and feet on people in one of the other mortal kombat games now it's time to take a look to see what type of damage he would do in a ladder i'm talking about from an expert or, or professional player I should say what type of damage he would do in a Armageddon ladder so you do not have to wonder any longer because I'm getting ready to show you that did you see that fatality you just did that fatality is crazy burnt all this skin off caused him to explode classic I love it but anyway let me go ahead and um pop this up here on your screen I'm gonna let you check this out and enjoy it then I'm gonna come and check in with you guys and we're gonna go ahead and get y'all on up out of here so I hope you enjoy this tower I'll be right back after this Finish your yeah. yeah. 
Round one, fight! Come on now, you can't lie. He was he was thrashing. He was thrashing him. I had to end it right there. That was a 21 nothing. He was literally beating them into the ground with that one. But anyway, guys, we have made it to the end of the video. I would like to say if this is your first time watching, I strongly and highly recommend that you subscribe and turn on post notifications as this is your brand new favorite and exclusive place for Mortal Kombat content. Don't worry, the Lore of Combat series going forward, at least for the time being, will be at a one hour duration, meaning that I will be bringing you guys longer content and I'm going to do the best I can to bring you two to three videos a day. I'm working on the schedule and we trying to get as lit as we can over here. With that being said, again, I appreciate you guys watching. I'm going to go ahead and pass that question off to you guys in the comment section below. Again, do you enjoy the Lore of Combat series? If you do, what's your favorite part about it? Did you learn anything special? Do you like it because the video is long? What's your favorite part about the Lore of Combat series? That's really what I want to know. Do I give characters more in-depth for the characters who don't have any? I'm just curious. So, um, yeah, with that being said, let me go ahead and drop my outro. Until next time, I will see you wonderful people later.
peace out. Be sure to check out the last video on the left and one of our popular videos on the right. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Peace out.